Hi again, my name is Kristian Gota, and um, uh, oh, here we have to work a little bit on mine. Um, <coughs> we were invited to come over here a couple of weeks ago, and um, I thought a little bit about <coughs> around cloud. What should we really talk about? And uh, the, the question mark came up as, uh, should we talk about the nice things? Should I be polite? Partik started today with asking a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to be even more sarcastic and, and really lifting up the problems we have seen over time. And <clears throat> there's an important part here. Uh, it's me here from Clavister and Jonas sitting here by the table uh, representing Clavister. But the presentation today is not going to be about anything that is a, a monologue. That's a nice thing. Uh, we don't have to agree to 100% about this. Definitely not. I'm just going to lift up things and see what you think about it. And the last but not least, seen as the only truth, definitely not. Um, but I'm going to lift up things here which is uh, probably going to irritate a lot of people. When we look at the hot topics at 2008, this was a presentation which I hold for Ericsson, which was my employer at that time. And we can see on the, on the right corner here, PBDTE, it was MPLS, GMPLS, there was a lot about the VPN technologies, IPsec versus TLS, which was also up on the table. We had key management, IP version 6, HIP, LISP, when it's coming to mobility, and the identity on, on uh, end nodes, which is still an ongoing discussion in ITF. Peer-to-peer -peer was another thing, and security was a part of it. <coughs> what happened until seven years later, eight years later? We still have the discussion on MPLS technologies or VPN technologies. We still have the discussion on IPsec and TLS, which is kind of an interesting discussion. Key management is not solved. IP version 6 is Definitely not solved. We have the GDP version 2. That's the only thing that was solved because they have a standardization organ which is basically cutting the heads off if you say anything else. Virtual uh, solutions is on the table. We are talking about SDN, NFB. We are talking about cloud here. HIP, LISP, and what else is coming on the table? We have peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah, kind of, but not the total solution. And again, again, again. And coming up to the last one, which was security again, <clears throat> which I'm going to be enlightened on uh, and talk a little bit about when it's coming to, to the cloud solutions. And from my point of view, we have a couple of comments on the cloud. Here we have a couple of comments from CSA. First statement is that we can't avoid data loss in one way or another they may not even have the required resources. To be frank, when we're talking to large customers in Sweden or we're talking about in Europe or even in the world, they don't have the knowledge base. That's one of the most important parts to, to discuss here. When it's come to adversaries, uh, we have a problem. They, have, they are intuitive, they work very fast, they attack you, they really are against you, and they develop fast. They are small and fast. Small enterprises, not li lifting up <coughs> any parts of that as a separate part, but, but it's still, if the enterprises can't keep up with this pace, how should you expect your customers on the cloud to really keep up with the pace when it comes to the adver adversaries here? So the most important part when it's on the discussions on cloud and security is speed and who's responsible for what. The interesting part is that we're moving from a part where we had a private cloud or private network, and we are now discussing about three different players. You have your internal, you have your ISP, and you have your cloud provider. Who's <coughs> responsible for what? Portwick took it up a little bit earlier when it's come to the connection and connection solutions. We don't even have it solved on the connection base. The ISP can be your ISP, but the ISP is depending on someone else. And this is also a very important part to take up when it's coming to talk, or should I say, talking around the cloud solutions. 
Because when we're talking about responsibility, it's also who's taking the blame when it's coming to money. Because in the baseline here, we're working for something. And money is always paying the bottom line. <coughs> I can take up something from Sepsis, which is Council of European Professional Informatics Societies. Um, we have well-defined risk management is something that they are arguing for. We can talk about the customer should enable compliance and so on and so on. This is a common denominator be between mine and, and, and public discussion. The communication line between the cloud computing or the data center, if we want to talk about the data center, has to be adequately covered when it's coming to security. Are that always the solution today? Nope. By all means, no. We are talking about, again, talking about the, the controversy between the TLS and the IPsec side. We have key management problem or identity management problem which has been up on the table for a long time. We have enlightened it lately. Even 2015, we took it up in a report this spring, delivered to the government, I think, this autumn, uh, that we have a problem here. We have a big problem. Sweden especially, when it's come to our central management, or our central management, but uh, central government, have all the tools ready. But the problem is that we're still talking about bank ID, and sorry, that doesn't solve the problem. We have a lot of other things when it's coming to, to, to legislation around cloud provisioning or cloud providing, and which should be in, in, in place. We have who owns a backup copy, for example, when you take your data center or your, or your cloud provider? Who owns that if you do a chapter 11 according to American standards? Is it the end customer? No. Sorry, it's not. It's the company who did the Chapter 11. Who's buying that Chapter 11 company is another discussion. They own the content on the tapes. And you can't solve it by, or should I say, by an agreement, because that's totally, totally out of question. <coughs> What's happened? There is an unclear ownership of IMRs and IPRs. That's a baseline for, for security, I would state. Because what I'm earning my money on is IMRs and IPRs. <laughs> Authentication authorization is still an issue. Again, as I said before, who's responsible, responsible for what? And, and to be frank, there need to be a clarity when it's come to agreements. And as, as we are gathered here, we're working with this, within this space in one way or another. And from my point of view, it's we need to be, be very clear when it's come to agreements between us and the customers, especially SMEs and SMBs. Traffic separation, again, coming down to, to the discussion of network and uh, network solutions. We have robustness. If my site is out of order or out of operations, I should have another site. Have I planned for all the bandwidth? Have I planned all the data? which I said, the com computational part, the storage, etc. Do I have a full copy? What's the SLA? There's a lot of question marks risen on top on this topic, really. And it needs to be solved in one way or another. We are only work, and Clavis is only working in one, one part of this. Threats and possibilities. You can see this as, a, as, as a, something, as an augmentation that cloud is not the way we should go. I definitely don't agree with that comment, but, but it's, there is a critical risk with data, which we need to take into the robust, robustness discussion. We were talking a little bit earlier about uh, running on uh, Azure. We were talking about running on uh, Amazon. We can talk about running on Google. We are tied to a provider today, as it is. I don't disagree with that business at all, but we should be aware that this is the case. Shortage, uh, shortage of skilled employees is definitely one of the big ones. Because there is a humongous amount of people that need to be educated. And we are, in this room, are normally supplies in one way or another to end customers. And we need to educate the population or the employees. 
Reliance on third party to run your IT is another discussion because this is a type of outsourcing. And there is a discussion on, on that. US government definitely can see anything. Um, sorry to say, they are the biggest spy organization in the world. Uh, so, so there's no warranties. If you're moving data over to the United States, you can't guarantee anything. Because if you, as the first time you traverse a country border, a totally, totally different rule set is working on your information. There's little room for negotiation on contracts. To give you an example is Google. You don't even have an agreement. And that's a big problem, seen from an SME and SMB point of view. This one is, is very important, and I'm not stating anything. This is more a general discussion. Cloud vendors outage leave you high and dry. If you have an outage or a data leakage or a data loss, you're high and dry. And this is something important to remember. Lack of internet access leaves your data out of reach. Another one. Everyone thinks this is hay and wire and we can use 3G, 4G, 5G. But in reality, we don't have coverage all over the place with radio. God forbid if we even have a war. Then you're high and dry. So to give you an example on the background for this discussion is that the planning as we had an, uh, a new decision on the government side in Sweden at least, as of 16th of June, I think it was, we have now a total defense again after 15 years. This is now going to start to take an effect over time, which means we can't even have this. That means fixed line wire is the only thing that is going to work. Forget radio, because radio is gone if anything happens. Cost-saving benefits disappear as demand grows. That is a discussion point, at least, if you're going to grow. And automatic updates and force changes. And this is the funny part, because you can get automatic upgrades and your functions go to pieces. We had a discussion around that point. Upgrade my OpenStack, parang, my services go out the door. So it's both on the end customer point of view and seen from an operator point of view. Common threats, which I, I, I uh, lifted up a little bit. I want to boil it down to a couple of points. Share techno shared technology vulnerabilities <coughs> is one. Account and service hijacking is another. We have data loss and leakage. We have insecure APIs. It's funny to work with, with cloud, really. And I'm a, I'm a grumpy old guy at 50 and I'm going for my 60s now. Uh, and the interesting part is here, everyone talks about APIs. So when we are going to reuse REST interfaces, so when we're going to use this and that, no one talks about the security on those interfaces. No one. And the interesting thing is that OpenStack, by all means, a good thing, have taken little account to the security part. A malicious insider, to be frank, do you trust all of your employees as a big organization? If you do, congratulations, you're God. <laughs> because that doesn't even happen. Uh, we had, uh, I think it's 12, 13 years ago, we had a very interesting situation on the high, high quarters uh, or headquarters here in Stockholm on the military side. We had a general who basically had SM as a popular hobby, and he had his secret documents at home, taken out at the copier, at the headquarters, brought home in a suitcase, and he had his hookers at home. Which is kind of interesting because he was security cleared level one. So, so do you trust all your employees? Definitely not, and you should never ever do it. Now comes the interesting part. If I don't do it as, as, an, as a company, how in the hell should I ask a customer to you trust your employees, or you as a company, right? We have to think about this, and this is also with uh, data mining. There's a lot of other things we can do on the collective data. Because in most cases, what we're talking about here, they are not encrypted, they are clear text, we can do whatever we want. We can even do the data mining on the encrypted part. We 
we have a couple of things when, when it comes to security on, on, on a cloud solution. And uh, we can talk about traditional security and friends and so on. How many of you are logging every single thing? Who is going into, for example, a rack? How many of you are logging that? Hands up. Awesome. What? <laughs> How many of the people going into a site is logged? Again, what? <laughs> the interesting part is here, that should be an obvious one. Who is gaining uh, access to my physical site? If you look into everything on 3GPP, for example, which is the baseline for everything that we're building on mobile today and everyone is living on, or most people are living on, at least in this business, is that they are built around one single point. That is, you have a locked room technology. That means you are going to register who is entering that room and who is entering the equipment. That's a baseline. And if people don't follow that one, the rest of the security is falling to pieces totally. And to give you an example on how bad it can be, I was in the Philippines, I was in Zebu, very nice meeting, and it was a user group meeting. I went into, I was going to the loo when I was on a big mall. And they told me, it's up there. I went up, I looked to my left, there was a door open. That seems to be some interesting equipment <coughs> inside, and I stopped and looked inside. There was standing Ericsson equipment on every single rack I had in front of me. The interesting thing, that was the central point for Philippines, Cebu, or Cebu region, when it's come to phone exchange. The door was open, there was no one there, and I was just going up and taking a leak. If I was a terrorist, or I was a criminal, I could go in there, draw out a couple of contacts, just pulling out the electricity, and the total Cebu region was out of order. And that is an interesting discussion on a locker room technology. Data center security. We have shared structures. Typically is 25% of the traffic into a cloud is coming from external side. The rest of the bits generated is internal. It's between different servers and storage. So when we're talking about the shared structure, that is basically to do the massive filtering and taking away the big threats that we can see towards this site. Then we have another thing, which is per customer, if we have customer running here, is to take care of each customer's demand. Now, there are two ways of solving this problem. There is one, which is the virtual system type of solution, which I disagree with because you're sharing the same functions. You're depending on another one, which means the rule set is going to be horrific. It's going to look like crap. So you need to have one VM, or at least one separate security gateway per customer. We have incident reporting solutions. How many have that? A couple. We have the forensic part, which is also interesting, because most people are not suited to do the forensics. We have forensics education here in Sweden, and I'll tell you, I'm not very happy about that one, because they don't know the backside from the front on a horse. Application security and control solutions. Uh, that means we, are, we need to be able to do some type of recognizing of applications. The interesting part is HTTP2, which is totally encrypted end to end, and you can't sh see shit, to be frank. You can't see anything. And the interesting part is here, we need to be, go over now to signal analysis, and we need to do a lot of other things when it comes to doing the application of security and control. Encryption key and key management, again, coming down to the old statement, we have a big problem. Virtualization capabilities with full separation. Yeah, I wrote that. And the problem here is that Dockers, we were sitting and discussing Dockers a little bit earlier here. Dockers is an interesting technology and it's a nice solution. It's an absolutely crap seen from a security point of view. So anyone who's thinking about that, think more than once. 
Because the security part is that you can do go into a docus, write a couple of files, and you can go in and get root. Docus is nice from a private networking point of view and running a number of applications. Seen from a cloud point of view and using that towards a third party, we get it. Seen from, again, a security point of view. Security as a service <coughs> is something that you can do. And of course, it's, it's, it's capable of uh, acting directly as we are speaking. The interesting part is here, we have a problem here. VMware is kind of a nice thing seen from a security point of view and separation of Nix. Zen is the same. KVM has a backlog. Because KVM doesn't have the full separation on the Nix. So we can basically use the Nix to get access to different customers. I can even pull down a customer. We have done this so uh, on KVM. So we even close down a full kernel just by doing a couple of things on a VM. So there is ways on, on doing things. Now, I was acting here as a bad guy, or should I say a grumpy guy in the 50s from the United States. Not everything is so bad as it looks. We can do things, but we need to think about it. The problem we have here is that most people don't think because they don't have the full education. And the problem is, no knowledge, I can solve the world's problem. Knowledge, I know I have a problem. And this is the big difference. Most people are ignorant when it comes to the problems because they are not well-educated. And the well-educated see the problems and can do partially to solve the problem, but not all of them. And we are sitting in the same boat, so politely. We are trying to get ahead on this. Now I'm using Clavister, Clavister uh, PowerPoints on this because I need to do a couple of things when it comes to profitability. We need to earn money on this. And there are a couple of ways of doing this. I'm not driving TLS, the TLS track. Forget it. What we're talking about here is IP version, or should I say IPsec and IP version 2. That's the baseline for everything when it comes to tunnel. From the endpoint, if you're using the internet side or any type of ISPs or third party. Again, coming down to Pato's comment on, on that every, every connection you have or every equipment you put into the internet is part of it. I totally agree. But again, coming down to you need to have something here which is doing your security first and then we will think about the rest. Uh, we are today running a city cloud, for example. Again, everyone on City Cloud should be very happy. So Clavista is running as, as a virtual gateway. On the cloud side, we have the customers over here. Uh, <clears throat> so there is a function here, which is, you can basically do a copy of this, cut and paste, which is copying the previous page. This is taking care of the end, or should I say, the end customer to the cloud solution. Then we can have a discussion if we should do that in layer two, layer three. There is a number of other things when it's come to call it a package where we have an enterprise or distributed enterprise. We can have our central cloud. We can have a couple of departments or whatever, and even separate customers. And we can use one of each other, or should I say, one secure gateway per customer. Even the, the, uh, the mobile warriors. And the same thing when it's come to other types of packages. Running up here, what we have done is that we have the appliances. We are doing it like Cisco, Checkpoint, Fortinet, or whomever. The interesting part is that we're also doing the VSG, or the Virtual Security Gateways, as VMs. Those VMs, I'm, I suppose, is not a document, because we are not supporting that, but we are running on a VM, on, on the KVM or VMware. We have the same front end, but we have a difference when it comes to cl Clavis the Cloud licensing. So what we can do here is to do all the management just like a normal appliance, which is then acting in the VM as a normal appliance, and you're getting a result. And I'm not solving all of the problems. The same thing here. We can do a cloud management. We can do work with a SAS or PAS or IS. <clears throat> but here comes the interesting part. 
this is our experience now under a VM or in VM environments. This is what you're getting out on one blade. This is a dual socket Kalita Creek running IPsec today. This is the speeds we're getting. This is one blade or one serve. The plain text we're getting from this is 5 million packets per second. There's no absolutely no discussion about having a separate hardware for this. We can run that in VMs. And if we can't reach these figures, congratulations. All of this coming down to one thing. Quick Assist, DPDK, and SRIOV is Intel x86 technology. If you have those supports under your VMs or the hypervisor, you're going to be guaranteed to have a throughput which is quite high. We have now reached the speeds on, on Intel hardware when it's come to security, and I'm talking about network security here, which is reaching the, the capabilities of the latest and greatest on KVM and whatever network process you're putting on this. The IPsec is definitely the highest figures you can reach on the market. And this is what you can do with the quick assist. Uh, the quick assist here is what we have done. I don't know about others, but this is what you can reach with real hardware. This is running in a data center type of solution. The 5 million packets per second per core is definitely running directly on data center equipment. So if you have x86, this is the figures you should aim for, at least. If you don't have that type of support at that type of speed, look other way. Full support for SRIV. This is the interesting part, going back again to the previous discussion on, on the Iron uh, solutions. Um, and, and what we have here is an ability to reserve hardware, not virtual, but hardware for execution. And that means we can, we can even on the normal hardware or your data center, we can reach the speeds which is wire speed. That means a 10 gig interface is a 10 gig interface. It's not five, it's not two, or whatever virtual IO is giving you, or any one of the others. We can reach the speeds now on the ingress side. Even on the internal, we can use with the OBS 2.4 and higher, we can reach the speeds of 20 gig. Because they have now got the ABS. <coughs> So there are capabilities of lifting up portions. I'm not stating everything here because some things here are process dependent and some things are definitely physically dependent. A little bit coming back to the previous one, we are going to prevail. We are definitely going to win this, but we need to take it seriously because it's not always, seen from my point of view or our point of view at least, it's not always the good days. We need to think about every single step. And frankly, one of the most, most important parts we have as a community is to educate the end customer in one way or another. And I'm talking about everyone, from an employee all the way up to the CEOs. Because if we don't, we're going to end up with a mess. And I don't want to see the first, the first case in the court where someone has lost say 10, 20, 30 million crowns, we even higher numbers, because you don't have enough security, you didn't think about the responsibility matrix or whatever. That needs to be in place. And we have seen too many cases where it has been come see, come out when it's come to certain, certain discussions. But we will prevail on this one, definitely. But we need to think about it. Again, Questions? Totally silent. <laughs> yeah. You said something about insecure APIs. Do you want to expand on that? Yes, I can. Uh, we can take a longer discussion on authentication <laughs> authorization. The interesting part is that the ID handling, again, come down to the endpoints, which is going to be allowed for which one, who's going to be communicating to whom is an interesting discussion when we're talking about cloud where we should be able to expand in a large number. 
where's the identity of whom going to talk to who? And again, coming down to the authorization, which level are we discussing when it's come to this endpoint or front end? It can be a front end server. I want to scale the front end service because my back end can handle a lot of more transactions per second. If I want to scale out that, because we have seen that, how I'm going to guarantee that that point <coughs> over there is able to talk to my backends. We can talk about the OpenStack API and have a longer discussion on that because they are talking about over the same type of solution. Again, how do we guarantee that that endpoint over there is allowed to talk to this endpoint? I can comment, I usually get the question. Uh, how do you secure the OpenStack APIs? And the simple answer from our point of view is we don't. We secure uh, the framework in a totally different way. But I don't trust the OpenStack API security by itself. No way. So, yeah, so, 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 seeing from, uh, there's, there's nice, I'm always yelling about Yoda, but, 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 <laughs> there are nice ways of doing this. There are not, any simple solution, one, two, three on this. We need to think about every single step. And the interesting part is that the software guys always have a tendency to trust the other parts. Oh, you can send it over this API and everyone is happy. The interesting part is that that is totally out of the question. The first thing you should do is authentication and then you should have your authorization on. But that means also that you need to solve another problem. And that's the key management sol solution which tends to be a lot more discussion. This is not a, a one hour or 10 hour discussion. It has not even been solved in IETF the last 10 years. So, so the question mark still stands on the market here, or mark, should I say, on the ground. Would I like, and frankly, everyone here more or less is Swedish citizens. Would you like your personal information to be stored on a cloud provider which you don't trust? Because the, the community or the government thought it was a good idea. Here's a question mark over to you. Personally, would you trust them? I don't think it's very relevant because you shouldn't trust anyone. If you have to trust someone with your data, you play an expert someone, then you're doing it wrong because then you trust people with good intentions. But what about people with bad intentions, like a malicious actor? Thank you. Have you answered my question? Close down the cloud. <laughs> but anyway, it, 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 it's an interesting discussion. If we should be able to provide a certain type of levels of security here, we should really be able to guarantee one, two, and three. The communication, fine, we can solve that problem because it's a simple problem. Or should I say a less, sim uh, less complicated problem? It's a point to point. But when it comes to data storage, guarantee who's doing what on the information, there's a lot of more things on, on the table than people normally think about. That's why I also find it hysterically interesting that every single time we're talking about the cloud, everyone is, hey, read IDG, read CS, whatever. It's not as simple as one, two, three. And, and the, the, the problem has not arised on the sky yet because we didn't have a big legislation problem around it. But there are a couple of things, and, and I think Ceres is, is, is on the head on, 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 on uh, the nail here, is that if we are going to run this, there need to be a legislation. The problem is lawyers are slow. We as engineers are fast, and the lawyers are slow gives us a problem, and it's a big one. Because every single time they are going into for legislation, they forget the technology, and if they forget the technology, they're always lagging behind 20 years. <laughs> so, so sorry, we are running far ahead of the legislation. The problem is going to come up when it's come to governmental, and especially EU rules. But anyway, thank you for me, and uh, I'll be here again. Okay.